Today I'm going to show you how to make a children's book that is actually good and this coming from a YouTuber who isn't just trying to tell you how to get rich quick selling children's books. I actually want to create something of quality here. So we're going to write one with ChatGPT today. Let's get into it. Hello everyone. I am so excited for this video because I have been wanting to write a children's book for a while. And it seems like now with the rise of AI and everything that's going on, now is the perfect time to do that. I will say I have no ambitions of being a bestseller in children's books. I think there is opportunity there if you are looking to create children's books with AI. But in order to do so, you really have to understand the children's book market and create something of quality. I do not understand the children's book market uh, super well, but I do have a two-year-old and we read to her all the time from different children's books. So I feel like I do have a pretty solid understanding of what a children's book at her reading level should be like. And so we're going to go ahead and create one of those. Um, and this is why I'm so excited about it because we're entering an age where we can custom make things like this, children's books, coloring books, for our children or for people close to us. And it doesn't have to cost us an arm and a leg. And that's one of the, the beautiful things about it is that now we can do things that we wouldn't normally do because of the cost. And so we're going to see an explosion of new products on the market that are unique and different and interesting that would never have existed before because it just would have cost too much and it wasn't worth that cost to do the experiment. It's amazing that I can actually create a personalized children's book for my daughter, which is what we're going to do today, uh, using a tool like ChatGPT and Midjourney, which is, are the two tools we're going to use. Today, we're only going to discuss how to write the children's book, and then in a separate future video, we'll talk about how to do the illustrations for the book and then move on from there. So let's get into this. I'm really excited. First of all, we got to start with brainstorming. Now, I do recommend if you want to create a personalized children's book like, like this, that you do a little bit of your own planning and research because that'll help you down the line. It's it's a good idea to have an idea of where you want to go. Don't just ask ChatGPT to give you a, um, a children's book ideas. You can do that to get you started, but you're going to have to put some thought into this, as with any decent book. And I have already put some thought into this. So my, my daughter's name, her, her name is Piper, and we actually happen to live close to the beach. And she loves the beach, and we love going there. And so the children's book that I put together in my mind is going to be, uh, I'm going to, right now I'm calling it the Curious Sandpiper. And it's going to be about a baby sandpiper who gets separated from her mommy and goes around meeting various sea creatures. And from there, you know, learns a little bit about each sea creature, creature and is eventually reunited with her mom. And so... Uh, in this case, we're going to be giving ChatGPT a role and a little bit of a framework, which I discussed in my last video, one of my last videos on uh, prompt engineering. And so I've already got this prepared. Uh, we'll copy and paste this in here. You are a world-class children's book author, one of the best in the world. We'll be writing a children's book today aimed at children ages two to four. This book will be about a curious sandpiper who strays away from her mother and spends the rest of the book talking to various sea and beach creatures, asking them if they know where her mother is, and then learning a little about each creature. To start with, let's brainstorm a list of at least 12 sea or beach creatures that the little curious sandpiper could encounter. And so, and I'm actually going to add a little bit here. Make sure they are creatures that are easily, that can come on land or close to land. 
pipes because I don't want the sandpiper going into the ocean. All right, and so this is this is a good way to start brainstorming. If you already have an idea of what you want to do, you just want to get some some more ideas on how to make it better. Um, we could also start off with a prompt to just give you a list of ideas on children's books to write, and that's that's fine. Uh, but then you would have to dig a little deeper with prompts like this one. So let's go ahead and see what it gives us. All right, we got hermit crab, sea turtle, starfish, seagull, a seal, eh, I suppose, sea snail, a pelican, sand dollar, sea anemone, clam, and a crab, and a jellyfish. So the jellyfish won't work because um, there's not a good way for a sea pipe for a sandpiper to interact with that. Um, but uh, I definitely would like a crab, a sea turtle, a starfish, a seagull. All of those fit. Uh, a pelican would fit and so I've actually gone through this process a little bit on my own already and already selected the list that uh, I want so I'm just gonna paste this in here I have a list of six the crab sea seagull sea turtle dolphin starfish and pelican and so I'm just gonna let ChatGPT know that those are my choices so it understands. Now we need to create an outline. Now I don't know necessarily the best way to create a children. I don't know how professional children's authors create their outlines, but it made sense to me that we would want to do this on a page by page basis. So we know exactly what is happening on each page. That'll also make it easier for me later on when I'm producing the artwork in mid journey to know exactly what should be on every page and know what text is already going to go on that page. And so we're going to add this prompt here. I'm going to copy paste this in here. Now let's create a detailed outline of what will be on each page of the children's book. There should be a minimum of 24 pages. The reason for that is uh, that 24 pages is the minimum number of pages you can have on Amazon KDP. You cannot uh, print on demand any books on KDP that are smaller than the 24 pages. So I knew it was going to have to be at least that. It'll probably be a little more, but I just want to make sure it knows that. There should be a few pages at the beginning and end of the book showing how the curious sandpiper got away from her mother and then returned. And then each encounter with a different sea creature, see list above, should consist of four pages each following this framework. One. The curious sandpiper finds the sea creature in question and asks it what it is. You know, because it's a curious sandpiper. The sea creature tells it what it is, i.e. crab, seagull, sea turtle, etc., and explains a bit about itself. The sandpiper asks the creature if it knows where her mother met, went. The sea creature says it does not know where the sandpiper's mother is, but encourages it to look elsewhere, so the sandpiper moves on. So this is the structure we're going to give it. And again... I, I talked before about frameworks, but frameworks are going to get you the best results with ChatGPT. The more structure you can give it to work with, the more you're going to get closer to what you want. And this is the perfect example. So I already knew I'm going to want four or five pages at the beginning, four or five at the end to show the separation and then reuniting with the mother. And then, and this is especially true of children's books you want the children's book to have kind of a a very st structured approach at least that's based on my experience reading uh two or three children's books to my daughter every single day uh, very often the same ones sometimes we'll finish one and she wants to read it again immediately um I read a lot of children's books, you guys. So let's go ahead and give it this structure and see what it gives us in the form of an outline All right, it's giving us page one and two. All right, it's not quite following the structure because I, I told it to have, well, I guess maybe I wasn't too specific about how each of these should have one page because it's giving them each two pages. Um, 
but this isn't bad. So we get page one and two. Our story begins with the curious sandpiper playing by the seaside, watching the waves with her mother. She gets distracted by a shiny pebble and strays from her mother. The sandpiper realizes that she can't see her mother and decides to ask nearby creatures if they've seen her. That's fine. Uh, we're going to want to separate this out. Um, but let's see if this section here with the crab encounter follows the structure I gave it. So five and six, and we'll just say this is one page. The sandpiper stumbles upon a little crab scuttling across the sand and asks, Excuse me, who are you? The crab replies, I'm a crab. I love to walk sideways and search for food in the sand. Page seven or nine through ten, the sandpiper asks the crab if it has seen her mother. The crab tells her that it hasn't seen her mother, but encourages her to ask the seagull who can see everything from the sky. I like that. That seems like a good outline. And yeah, so this would be one page each instead of two pages each. It just got on the wrong foot there. Uh, when I was testing this earlier, it was not giving us that. So, yeah. Can you switch up the... Uh, I'll use more specific language. Can you rewrite that outline and do one page at a time, not two pages at a time. I'm going to say instead of rewrite that outline, I'm just going to say try again. That seems to be a very action-oriented command for ChatGPT. It really understands what that means. So let's see. All right, now it's just giving it to us in one big long list. And I think this is all the same. It's just giving it to us one at a time. That's fine, we can keep going with that. Um, I'm just going to, uh, the only thing I wanna change about this is these first two pages here. I want to make sure these two are a little bit, we, that we have a few more pages. So I'm going to say, can you expand these first two pages into four pages? And then I'll copy and paste. Whoop. It didn't copy. And then we say, okay, absolutely. Here, here's how those first two pages could be expanded into four. Our story begins with a beautiful sunny day. The sky is blue, the sun is shining, the waves are gently lapping on the shore. We meet the curious sandpiper. Uh, sandpiper spots something shiny among the pedal, pebbles. Her mother watches the waves. The curious sandpiper strays away following the shiny pebble. Okay, uh, this isn't too bad. Uh, I would maybe... Yeah, well, we can, we can start with this. So I'm going to give it another prompt now. And I'll just say, now write the text for the following section of the outline. Remember, you are a world-class children's book author, and this is an audience of two to four-year-olds. Each page should have only one to two lines. The reason I tell it uh, that I remind it that it's a world-class children's book author and that the audience is two to four-year-olds is that sometimes ChatGPT forgets, especially the more you go. And so I periodically like to remind it of these things. We probably weren't at that limit yet, but that can happen. So I'm going to paste these four lines that it had here. I'm just going to say page one just to make sure things are clear. Again, signposting, very important with... AI. And see what it gives us. Upon a sunny day by the seaside where the waves play, a curious sandpiper danced in the sand, her mother watching from where she's st where she stand. Okay, that doesn't make sense. Then what's this? A shiny sight, a pretty pebble, sparkling bright. Chasing the sparkle away she hops, so busy exploring she simply stops. All right, it's doing a rhyme here. I didn't ask it to do a rhyme. A lot of 
books at my daughter's level do have rhymes, but I think I would prefer to not have rhyming in this. So try again and don't worry about and, and, and don't rhyme. It's a sunny day at the seaside. The waves say hello to the shore. Look, there's a sandpiper. She's playing in the sand while her mother watches. Oh, what's that shiny thing? A beautiful pebble caught, has caught the sandpiper's eye. Curious, the little sandpiper follows the pebble. She's so busy exploring, she doesn't notice she's moving away from her mother. And this is good, but then we, in these four pages, we should have made more progress yet. Uh, so... We're going to have to work with this. Um, well, actually, that does kind of follow what I gave it here. So perhaps what I needed here was a better prompt with these pages to give more specifics about what happens in each page. Oh, wait, hang on. Yep, no, that, that's accurate. So this is good. This is a good start. Um, and the main reason that I'm using ChatGPT for this is mostly just to get me over the writer's block and to get me something to start with. I will probably rewrite most of this myself because that's uh, that's just the, the way it goes uh, a lot of the times with AI, especially when you have something specific that you're wanting. Um, so let's go to these four and again it's not really following the outline perfectly here let's actually go back to these pages here because I think these actually f follow the outline slightly better and say okay now continue the te continue writing the text with the following pages type these in here and then I'm going to let's just eliminate those and see what we do with that it might be our little sandpiper sees a crab scuttling by excuse me she asks who are you I am a crab, it says with a smile. I love to walk sideways and search for food in the sand. Have you seen my mother? The sandpiper asked, looking hopeful. I haven't, little one, required the crab, replied the crab. But the seagull might know. It sees everything from the sky. The text continues to be... Yeah, okay. That's not bad, too. Um, I would maybe give it a little more. But this is definitely a good start. And I can work with this and, and maybe ask it to elaborate and and add just a little bit more uh, but you get the idea of how this works we set up a page by page outline starting you know we start with the brainstorming then we set up the page by page outline and then you're able to give it each page with a little context on the grade level and the role we're trying to play here which is to be a children's book writer and then give it something see what it does Give it a framework because that's really important. I cannot emphasize the importance of frameworks when you're coming up with something like this. And we get something like this, which isn't bad. And so I'm going to, on my own time, com complete this whole process for all of the pages of this book. And then I will have a separate video coming out, hopefully not too long from now, about the artwork. And then we'll see what goes on from there. I'm really excited to create this whole thing uh, and give it to my daughter an actual physical book for my daughter, just for her. So that's going to be really exciting. Uh, and I will see you in the next video.